Hello everybody. Today we are going to see about the rest zones of the lung. It is an important topic. It is a very simple one. And in the further slides, I will make you understand it with the help of colorful diagrams. Let's proceed. First, we should know that the lung has been divided into three zones. So, each zone has a specific character. The zone 1 occurs at the apex of the lung. Here, what happens is that the alveolar pressure is higher than the pulmonary artery and the pulmonary venular pressure, obviously. So, because of the high pressure in the alveoli, it squashes the blood vessels flat such that the blood flow through the blood vessels is not possible. So, this is a simple diagram showing the pulmonary artery and the three zones of the lung. So, all the pulmonary artery and the three zones of the lung. This is the capillary and this is the vein. So, what happens in zone 1 is that in zone 1, the pulmonary artery is carrying the deoxygenated blood. Ideally, it is supposed to pass through the capillaries and get oxygenated from the oxygen in the alveoli. But since the pressure in the alveoli is so high, it is collapsing the capillaries to such an extent that blood flow through the capillaries is not possible. Therefore, oxygenation also does not take place. So, this is for understanding, I have marked here as, as also deoxygenated blood. So, this is the west zone 1. Here, what happens? The alveolar pressure is higher than the arterial pressure, that which is higher than the venous pressure. Because of that, this has happened. On a lighter note and for further understanding, I have drawn this uh, diagram. Here if you see, the alveolar pressure is so high that I have depicted funnily as a smiling alveoli because its pressure is high. Because the alveolar pressure is uh, high, it instead of allowing the blood to pass through the pulmonary artery, it is collapsing it and squashing the blood vessels as you see here thereby not allowing any blood flow at all. So when the blood does not pass through the pulmonary vessels then it does not get oxygenated. So this is what happens in zone 1. We now know that when zone 1 occurs the lung is ventilated but it is not perfused. Therefore, the gas exchange cannot take place, thereby resulting in the alveolar dead space. This zone normally does not occur because the pressure in the pulmonary artery is sufficient to pump blood to the top of the lungs, overcoming the alveolar pressure. But, unfortunately, if there is any reduction in the pulmonary artery pressure or if there is any increase in the alveolar pressure, uh, then this zone 1 can happen. When will a reduction in the pulmonary artery pressure happen? It can happen during severe hemorrhage. When the pulmonary blood in the, when the blood volume has been reduced, therefore the pressure is also reduced and there is not enough pressure to overcome the alveolar pressure. This can happen. Or else, if you are giving a positive pressure ventilation and therefore increasing the alveolar pressure, then also zone 1 can happen. So, in summary, in zone 1, the alveolar partial pressure exceeds the arterial partial pressure, which in turn is higher than the venous partial pressure. Now, we come to the second zone. Here, there is optimal ventilation perfusion matching. So, how does this happen? Here you need to remember that the arterial pressure is higher. But how come the arterial pressure become, became higher? It is because of gravity. So when we move down from the apex of the lung, the, due to gravity, the arterial pressure is higher. 
than at the apex and as a result it now exceeds the alveolar pressure i will make you, uh, this uh, understand this with the help of a diagram so this is the zone 2 so here if you see this is the pulmonary artery this is the pulmonary vein and this is the alveoli and here they are showing the partial pressure of the alveoli so here the pulmonary artery the pressure is higher when than the alveolar pressure because of this there is intermittent blood flow why because the difference the blood flow in any vessel will depend upon the difference between the artery and the vein right because the artery in the artery there will be always a higher pressure and the vein will be having a lower pressure so blood will be going from a higher to a lower pressure continuously if it depends upon the difference between the artery and the vein but here the blood flow depends upon the difference between the artery and the alveoli okay so here we are having an intermittent blood flow the flow there is a characteristic pressure flow relationship in this zone because the alveolar pressure is still higher than the venous partial pressure and in this zone the flow depends upon the difference between the artery and the alveoli there is this characteristic pressure flow relationship which is depicted which is called as starling's resistor or the waterfall effect so what do we now know just to summarize the blood flow is determined by the difference between the arterial and the alveolar rather than the normal arterial venous pressure that's it. so in zone 2 to reinforce again the arterial partial pressure exceeds the alveolar partial pressure which in turn exceeds the venous partial pressure now we come to the last zone that is zone 3 zone 3 is commonly found at the lung base so now we come to the end of the lung where the gravity is higher and because of this the uh, pressure in the vessels have now increased down the zone so what does this have for happen the venous partial pressure now exceeds the alveolar partial pressure such that the uh, blood flow is now determined by the arterial venous pressure difference as we all had expected so if you see here this is the zone p here there is a continuous blood flow because the blood flow depends upon the difference between the artery and the vein so the arterial partial pressure is higher than the venous partial which is higher than the alveolar partial pressure so to summarize the arterial partial pressure is greater than the venous partial pressure which in turn is greater than the alveolar partial pressure because in this zone perfusion is better than ventilation there is also a small degree of shunt that also we need to know with this we come to the end of the slide i hope you it would have given you a better understanding of the three zones of the lung in that case kindly share this video with the other aspirants thank you have a good day